When we started out, one of the hallmarks of Poets in Distress was we did not give long introductions to poems. Shut we up and read the read poem! Right. We would go to readings and we would hear people give five minute introductions to one minute poems. And another thing was, we have never been respected in Claremont outside of Nick's. <laughs> Fuck Claremont. Exactly. Fuck Claremont. That's why I'm happy to be in Pomona again. Pomona! Yeah! <laughs> Crystal served me today. Contrary and cramping, she put a brave face on it and underneath it, later leaving me this note. My shift is ending, so I will leave this here. But if you need to order anything else, Aaron, the redhead, can help as you flex your financial hustle. <laughs> Bones in a warehouse. I've got a 55-gallon drum of high-octane leaded gasoline in my garage. 322 caliber, a 308, and a 38. I know it's wrong. Someone once said I had strangler's wrists, but I'm older and weaker now. <laughs> Lard of the larder. For he hath gumboed his gherkin and rumpled her stiltskin. Oft coated cold chicken with shaketh and baketh. Our tract house McGlutton with mead and with mutton did cheweth and chomp on her rumpus, her roastus. Congeal us, O gravy with flesh round and wavy. Please glisten our gherkin and rumple our stiltskin with shaketh and baketh, with mead and with mutton. Please sup on our stiltskin, our rumpus, our roastus. Thank you. <laughs> Do not approach. Police name Greybeard and Manhunt. Brutus Chieftain spotted on Box Springs Mountain. Not under any circumstances. Brutus travels widely across, angry as confusion. <laughs> Biopsy, bled and cupped. When my scrotum was a coin purse, pinched open. One ball stuck halfway, the other lurching through the urologist's office, where one man wept and another prayed. Their wives were with them. You were at work. Why the weeping? What have we lost? Why the praying? What remains? An image for sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an image in That's a true story. <laughs> Need another ball poem. <laughs> I'm okay. Benderland haiku number one. Odd items found in Alice. Skeletal remains of Lewis Carroll. Skeletal remains of Lewis Carroll? Odd items found in Alice. <laughs> Melancholy menu specials. Yeah. <laughs> Starting a restaurant with the Grim Reaper was never going to be easy. Take the menu. She wanted to serve smallpox in a blanket, cream of cholera, filet of orphan. No, I said. Milkshakes of human kindness, angel food tarts and chocolate kisses. Bleh, she said. Braised breast of cancer, femur schnitzel, bubo's noodle soup. All I could say was fish and loaves, daily bread, Hot cross buns, she hit back with syphilis on a stick, thalidomide casserole, Irish potato blight cakes. Served with a big glass of geno cider, I mocked, some pole pot pie, Spanish inquit chicken. <laughs> Don't be an ass, she said. It was easier launching McDonald's. Hey, so the Big Mac, that was yours, I asked? Yep she said. And the McFlurry? Yep. What about the McRib? Don't be stupid, she said. That was God's creation. That and the drive through
One of my big hits from 30 years ago was called Razor Ribbon. I'm going to present that now. Razor Ribbon, sometime in the 1980s. While riding on the Amtrak on the coast route to San Francisco, I saw it. Some new type of barbed wire. Ribbons of razor blade on factory fence top. I want to see it everywhere. I want to see fallen fingers severed on the ribbon. Digitless delinquents dripping blood. I want to see razor traps for bank robbers. Razor steering wheels for car thieves. Razor pencils for radical riders. Razor transit benches for dozing transients. Razor turnstiles at theaters. Razor rape decoys. Razor pay toilets, pay phones, razor cash registers, razor returnable bottles, razor, 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 razor. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. We'll cut them to ribbons. Razor ribbon wrapped around Lady Liberty. I want to see the red blood flowing and covering America like the bleeding red maps showing communism in the 50s. You might ask why I'm reading these poems. Why are you, why are you reading poems? these poems? Well, they were the easiest ones that I could grab out of the bag. <laughs> you got any poems about your balls? <laughs> you want more? Shankoka. Okay. Hold on. Was that in this book? I don't know. You should know by heart. Then. This is the latest book. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just read. Yeah, I'm gonna read the damn thing. I think I put it in this book. Yeah, I think it's in there. Read the poem. Get up and read the poem! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I will. Speak up. Okay, hang on. Ch Chimoka speaks. For Humpty is not the only egg that lacks a shell. <laughs> when my left testicle talks, I listen. It's my macho playmate with puckers and hair. I call it mocha. The right one is chai. Chai mocha, I say, let's get in the car and go for a ride. Please don't wear those Levi's. They hurt us, chai mocha pleads. But I do, just to piss them off. Black Levi's, high and tight. Mocha snivels with every Buick bump. At bedtime, Chai slips out of my boxers and asks, Why do you hurt us? <laughs> well, it's just that you're always squirting me full of testosterone and making me fight 300-pound men. And I just want to watch TV, but you make me scan for shows about student nurses and women in prisons. And I can't ride a bicycle anymore. <laughs> what would you be without us? Learn to live with it, Mocha says. And I listen. I drape them over the pink chair and let the wrinkles fall out, delicate fabrics. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any, uh, I'll take one more request. This is my last one. Hi, Jinx. How great that all are. Unitard or Unitard? Yeah. No, he said Unitard! <laughs> He's got a Unitard. <laughs> he doesn't be Unitard. You have any more poems about women prisoners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. There's, there's too many of them. Too many women prisoners? Too many poems. Orange is the new flag. I want to read it. How about the Ruthless Pope and Peel? Hold on. Where we're at, you got to finish with that. The Ruthless Pope and Peel. Okay, yeah. I do have to finish with that. Read that one first. Born Innocent. All right, we never gave long introductions to poems, but I, I'm not going to either this time. But this is a navel orange. Southern California was filled with these. And this next poem is about them. One secret about these that I didn't know when I was a kid is they're seedless. There are no seeds. Hey. <laughs> Rootless pulp and peel. Did they do it with knives? No, but we carved our initials. Was it with axes, hatchets, saws? No, but we chopped kindling. Did they do it with smog? The smoke came from smudge pots. Did they do it with parasites? No, but there was a fungus. Did they do it with flames? The bonfires destroyed the debris. 
When they took the orange groves, they came with bulldozers, ribbing them out by the roots, pushing the trunks into the corner of the grove. I still remember the wet smell of the torn earth like tears. My mother was crying. The canals stopped flowing. The reservoirs were dry. Some trees still clung to their fruit, dry brown. The men did not pick the trees. I tried to find some seeds. Was it somber? We did not speak. We were uprooted. How can we believe you? I was a boy. I ran between the trees. I slurped pulp and peel on thirsty days. What evidence exists? Orange crate labels hidden by my father. Sun-kissed wrappers wrapped from the railroad. Where did the cars park? Where were the freeways? There were more trees than people. In spring, the air was filled with the scent of a million blossoms. Strong branches and green leaves and golden fruit shipped round the world. Wealthy growers with tall homes. I can still smell the soil. Let me show you the labels. Thank you. All right, poison distresses.